Today we're going to talk about Pascal's triangle and binomial expansion, which is something that you're going to have to know how to do for certain on your next unit test. Before I get into Pascal's triangle, I'm going to talk about a couple of the sequences that you probably already looked at back in 7374. I didn't make a lesson on those because they're more uh, exploratory kind of just looking for patterns. So the famous ones, of course, are Fibonacci and the Lucas sequence. Fibonacci sequence, if you look at the terms here, these are both recursive formulas in that they depend on the previous numbers to get the following numbers. So 1, 1, you start with 1, 1, you add them together, you get 2, and 1 and 2 is 3, and 2 and 3 is 5, and so on. So you can see that pattern very nicely. That was good old Fibonacci. And Lucas, he made up, well, let's start with 1 and 3 and start adding them together. 1 and 3 is 4, 3 and 4 is 7, 4 and 7 is 11. So nothing very special. I mean, you could make up your own sequence. What if you said you want to just start with uh, 1 and then 5 and then add the numbers together? So yeah, it's, it's okay, but it's not as fantastic and magical and important as the Pascal's Triangle. So Pascal's Triangle, named after Mr. Pascal, uh, Blaise was his first name, um, he got all the credit for it. He didn't really invent it. It's been around, it was around much longer than Pascal. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is what the Pascal's triangle looks like. And you should be able to draw this. And I'm going to show you how, what makes more sense out of it. I mean, you can see there's some patterns here all along each side. There are ones. And if you look at the diagonal here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. But what is happening here is that there were actually zeros here now, you can kind of pencil them in to see how this makes a little bit more sense and how you get to the next row so for binomial expansion this row would be x plus y to the power of zero and you know that anything to the power of zero is equal to one and that's where we get our run our one this is row zero Okay, it's important that you get that. Now, the next row, this is row 1, and this would be x plus y to the power of 1. And you would say, well, that gives me x plus y. And what is important for the triangle is that it is 1x plus 1y, and that's where we get the 1s. You should be also familiar with how to square a binomial. So let's say I have x plus y to the power of 2. And you know that is square the first term, twice the product of the terms. So that would be 2xy and square the last term. And again, that gives us the 1, 2, 1. Now, as we get into the more difficult or the, the higher powers, so again, that was row one, this was row two, row two, and row three, row four, row five, row six. I'm going to show you how to expand the binomials when you have something to a larger power. So let's start with um, something like, uh, well, let's do something to the, the third power first. We'll just do a little example of, of each of these so that you have... Um, uh, an example for each one. So if I said, I want you to expand, let's move this up, let's say I want you to expand x plus 3 to the power of 5. Oh, I forgot the x. x plus 3, let's start this again here. Let's do x plus 3 to the power of 3. We'll start and move our way up to the higher powers. So in this case, now I don't have x's and y's, so I have to change my patterning here a little bit. So x plus 3 cubed, I go to row 3, where we have the 3. And the first thing you should do is write out the numbers 1, 3, and I'm going to leave lots of space in between, and you'll see why here in a minute. So I write out the numbers, and then I put in the, um, the terms that are in my binomial here. So I have an x and I start with x to the power of 3. And then I'm going to write x as I go from left to right. I'm going to decrease it by 1. So this is my first term. I start x cubed, x squared, x, and x to the power of 0 
that's one, so I don't need to write that one out. Now coming back the other way, let me get a different color, I'm going to change the variable to the one, the term here, so I have a three. So this is going to be three to the power of three, and this is going to be three to the power of two, and three to the power of one, and three to the power of zero is one. Now there are plus sign, the plus sign is here, so I leave the plus in between all of these, and if I have a negative in it, you'll see that that will change when we work with the exponents, obviously. So once you've done this, your job is to simplify. You can't just leave it like this. This will get you maybe a mark or two. But the teacher wants to know, probably ask you to sketch the Pascal's Triangle, maybe up to level four or five. Uh, it's really not hard. All you're doing is adding these numbers together as you go down, right? 3 plus 3 gives me 6. 3 plus 1 is 4. And 1 and 0 is 1. So I don't know if I went over that very clearly for you, but that's all we're doing, right? We're just adding these numbers together to get the next number. So here, now you have to complete it. So I would have x cubed. Um, 3 times 3 is 9x squared. 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27, and I have 1x, and 3 cubed is 27. So there's your expansion of x plus 3 cubed. So we're going to do a couple of others. This would be what you call the, um, when you have one variable and one term. So my variable is x, my term is 3. So let's write that here. We'll call this one variable and one term. Okay, so that's that's not so hard, is it? So let's go on to um, a couple of other examples here. Actually, I think I already wrote this one out on the other side, but we'll just ignore it when we get to it. So let's take a look at this one. X minus 2 to the power 5. So you want to go to your fifth level on your triangle first. And you're going to write out the numbers that are there. It's 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So I write 1, 5, leave some space in between, okay? 10, 10, 5, 1. So that's the row right off your Pascal's triangle. And now you're going to plug in the variable. So I'm starting with x here. So this is going to be x to the power of 5, and as I go from left to right, I'm going to reduce the exponent by 1. x to the power of 3, x to the power of 2, x to the power of 1, x to the power of 0. I'm not going to write that in because I know it's 1. Now I'm going to come back the other way with my term, which is minus 2. The negatives are a little bit trickier because you have to make sure that you're raising them to the right power as you're bringing them back. Okay, so let me see if I can find another color here. I didn't like that. Let's go green. Okay, so my second term is minus 2. So I start here with my minus 2, and I write it to the power of 5. So as I go backwards now, I'm going to change the exponent, reduce it by 1 minus 2 to the power of 4, minus 2 to the power of 3. It's why you need to leave lots of room in between so you don't smush all these things together, right? Minus 2 to the power of 2, minus 2 to the power of 1, minus 2 to the power of 0. Okay, so the sign that goes in between here now, they're all going to be pluses. I'm going to put them all pluses for now. And you can notice that these are going to change as I expand these negative numbers, right? Negative to an odd number is going to give me a minus. So this next sign will be negative when I expand it. So now you have to simplify. So I've got 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. My exponent's decreasing from left to right for my first term, which was my variable x. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Come back the other way. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0 means it's not there because it's 1. So um, if you look at the exponents here, you'll also notice that this is power 5, 
and 4 plus 1 is 5, and 3 plus 2 is 5, and 2 plus 3 is 5, and 4 and 1 are 5. There's a 1 here, and 5. Okay, so you have to make sure that you didn't make a, a mistake there. So now all I have to do is simplify it. x to the power of 5. Minus 2 to the power of 1 is minus 2, times 5. Oops, should have had a minus here, right? So I have minus 2 times 5 is minus 10x to the 4th. Um, minus 2 squared is positive, so that's 4 times 10 is going to be 40x cubed. This one, minus 2 cubed is negative 8 times 10 is minus 80x squared. Um, the next one, I have minus 2 to the power of 4. A negative raised to a positive exponent will give me a positive number. So 2 to the 4 is 16 times 5 is 80 and my variable x to the power of 1. And finally, minus 2 to the fifth is minus 32. So what you should also notice here is that my exponents are decreasing by 1, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And the signs, because I had a negative in here, are going negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay, so they're going to alternate if you have a negative term here. Okay, we've already done this one, so I won't waste time on that. Let's do this big one here. x minus 2y to the power of 4. Again, you want to go to your Pascal's triangle, and the terms are 1, 4, 6, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Okay, write those out first, and it's always good to use different colors. It helps you identify what you're doing and making sure that you don't uh, you don't lose track of, of what you were working on here. Okay, so now I'm going to write out the first term, which is 5x. So it's going to go 5x to the power of 4. That's the highest variable. Then I have 5x to the power of 3. Then I have 5x to the power of 2. This is pretty easy, isn't it? And then 5x <clears throat> to the power of 1, 5x to the power of 0. Now come back the other way with my second term, minus 2y to the power of 4, minus 2y to the power of 3, minus 2y to the power of 2, minus 2y to the power of 1, minus 2y to the power of 0. Now go back. Put a plus in between each of these terms. Don't forget that they're not all multiplied together. There's Each of these has to be simplified, but they're all separated by a plus at this point until I check the signs. So the mistake that most often happens is right here. People say, oh, 5x power 4, that's 5x to the 4th. But it's 5 to the 4, x to the 4. Remember from your lessons in exponents. So be very careful. 5 to the power of 4. 5 times 5 is 25 times 5 is 125 times 5. That's 600. X to the power of 4. Okay, now minus 2y. So minus 2 times 4 is minus 8. And 5 cubed is 125. All right, so I have 125 times 8. And that would be a thousand x to the power of three y. Oh, I wrote a hundred. A thousand x to the power of three y. Now I go to the next one. It's going to be positive as well. Oh, just a minute, I made that pause. That should have been a negative, right? Minus two y. I forgot I have a negative. So you know if you have a negative here, your signs need to alternate in your solution. They're going to alternate because you're raising to even and odd powers, which changes the sign, right? So I have six times, this is gonna be six times five x squared is going to be 25 x squared and minus two y squared, that's going to be four y squared. You might wanna do a second line like this in here. I probably should have done that before you made it a little more more clear. So 4 times 25 is 100 times 6. That's going to give me 600 x squared y squared. 
Notice this to power 4. These add up to 4. These add up to 4. Okay, so when you have two terms, you'll always have the sum of these will add up to this power. That doesn't happen when you have a, have a term here, right? A term and a variable just goes 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But now I have two variables in here. Two variables. I shouldn't say two terms. It's really two, two variables. Two terms with two variables. Okay, that's getting a little too confusing. Okay, so here now I have 4 times 5 and minus 2y cubed is going to be negative 8y cubed, right? That's times 5x times 4. So 4 times 5 is 20 and 20 times 8 is 160 and it's going to be negative xy cubed. And finally, I'm raising minus 2 to the power of 4. That's going to be positive 16y to the fourth. Okay, so that's all you have to do in this lesson. It's not too difficult. Just be really careful with your um, simplifying. Make sure that the bracketed terms, you put it in brackets and raise it to the power. Because if you don't, then you just might say, oh, well, that's just x to the fourth and forget about raising 5 to the power 4. Remember, this is 5x times itself four times. Okay, so that's the end of chapter 7 uh, with Pascal's Triangle. And I will next do a chapter review, like a little chapter test for you. Um, it would also be nice if, if you're watching this, if you could give me kind of a little note or a thumbs up saying that you would like me to do these lessons for you for your advanced functions, which you will probably be taking next year. Hopefully you've done well enough in the course that that's a, um, a career path you want to take, taking advanced functions and then calculus and vectors. And if I get enough interest, I, I plan on continuing this for you for next year. All the best.